Good afternoon, boys and girls. I hope you are doing well today. I will be your teacher for this wonderful session that we'll be having. Um, before we begin, let me just encourage you all to put your name and the school you're from in the chat. All right, so we'll begin in another minute. But in the meantime, just place your name and your school in the chat. All right, boys and girls, we are going to begin now. But it's really good to see so many of you coming out. As you join, I want to just encourage you to invite a friend to join in with us. We are live on YouTube as well. So for those who can't join us on Zoom, you can also join us live right now on YouTube. I want to say a big good afternoon to all our students. I see Ibanks from Seaview Primary. I see Grant from Yabnal Care Center. I'm seeing Ramesh from Manville Primary School. Who else? I'm also seeing um, Vericia from uh, Villa Road Primary. I'm seeing Richards from McIntosh. I'm seeing, um, is this Kemaria from Seaview? I want to welcome all of you as we engage today in this or another session, our grade four student webinars. Now, we want to get into today's session and today's focus is all about subtracting fractions. Now I'm sure that you have encountered fractions at some point in time throughout your class and I'm sure when I think about it your teacher may have also covered fraction earlier this term. Please type yes in the chat if it is that you did some amount of fraction this year. All right so let me know if you did some fractions. Just type yes in the chat so I know that you would have done fractions this term. Great, I'm seeing a lot of yeses. So that is telling me that the students who are here today would have encountered fractions some point in time throughout this term or even before. Now we're gonna look at subtracting fractions and just to be more specific about what we plan to do today, we want to look at subtracting a proper fraction or a mixed number from a whole number. All right, so that's the aim for today. We want to subtract proper fractions or mixed numbers from a whole number. Now, I hope that you were actually able to join us yesterday because in yesterday's session, we focused heavily on types of fractions. So just to check up on those who have been following us from Monday till now, please put in the chat, yes, if it is that you were here yesterday, All right, so I realize that we have some consistent individuals who, who come on on a day-to-day -day basis and I want to encourage you to continue to come to the sessions. I'm happy that you're here yesterday and the days before. And if you're new today, let me just remind you that we have sessions continuing next week, Monday into Thursday. So don't feel left out, join us today and join us again on Monday. But let us get into what we want to achieve today. Just so you know, for those on Zoom, all the, all the microphones have been disabled. So once it's time for us to talk, I'll ask you to raise your hands and then from there, I'll indicate who can unmute. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, a good way to start off today's session would be just to do a little activity to warm you up. So we have some food items here on the screen. They're pictures of something, they're cartoons, of course, but they're depicting different foods. Just to see if we are interpreting things the right way, could you just indicate in the chat 
what you see on screen, not as a fraction, but what you what food, what fruit, what do you see on screen? Just indicate to me on using the chat so I'll know that you are seeing what I am seeing as well. All right, so just put in the chat the food that you are seeing on the screen. All right, I'm looking at the chat right away. Uh, I'm seeing that um, Kalila is saying that she's seeing pizza. All right, great. I'm hoping that others are seeing pizza as well. Is there anything else that you're seeing? Interesting, I'm seeing orange coming. I'm seeing cake. All right, and watermelon. Well, that sounds like we're covered all four. So we're seeing pizza, we're seeing orange, we're seeing cake, and we're also seeing watermelon. Great. Now that we're all seeing the same things, let's see if we can apply this to a task. So let's get started. Now, by looking at the diagrams that we have here in place, you'll note that there are some portions that are gone. Somebody took some of it away. Now, which food did this little girl eat if she took four-tenths of what is there? Which of these four items did she take away? Did she eat if she took four-tenths of it away? All right. Think about it. We have A, B, C, and D. A for pizza. We have B for the orange. We have C for the cake. And D for the watermelon. So if it is that she took four-tenths of the food away, which one did she take? A, B, C, or D? I'm looking in the chat and I'm seeing quite a few responses saying D. Um, I, I do see here and there the A and I see a C coming up, but I'm seeing the majority D. Now, just before I move on, maybe I can allow one person to just explain themselves. So I'm going to go to my participants list. Is there anyone who wants to share with me why it is that D would be the answer? Raise your hand. And I see Khalili, your hand went up right away. I'm going to allow you to unmute. So please unmute yourself and come and talk to me about why you think your answer is D. Go ahead. I chose D because the watermelon has 10 parts in all and there are four parts missing. And the question says, which food did I take four of the 10? So yeah, I got it. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. So four, what you have on screen there is four tenths. So if four tenths went, we are looking for the food item that is divided into 10 equal parts. And then from that, we want to see which one is missing four of the 10 equal parts. And I'm in agreement with you. D is indeed the correct response. Thank you so much for sharing. Now let's continue. We have some more to look at. So let's go again. If you selected D, you're indeed correct. So let's look at the same food items. Now. Look at this little boy here. Which food did I have if I took three-eighths of it? Again, which food do I have if I took three-eighths away? We have A, B, C, and D. Think about it, boys and girls, and just place your option in the chat. Is it A, pizza? Is it B, the orange? Is it C, the cake? Or is it D, the watermelon? We want to know which one it is. We took three-eighths away. Hmm, I'm seeing a lot of A's coming in the chat. All right. So that's interesting. Let us see if you got this one correct. Now, looking at it, amazing, boys and girls. It is, it is indeed A. And if I listen carefully, I reflect on what was said to me earlier. I, I like the responses, the response I heard earlier. So for this fraction, three eighths, it is divided into how many equal parts, boys and girls? Just kind of work with me now. So how many equal parts would be this fraction or this diagram be divided into? Can I put the number in the chat to let me know how many equal parts? And I've seen the response coming in. There are eight equal parts. And how many equal parts are missing from the eight? All right, so I'm looking in the chat again and I'm seeing the responses coming in that there are three equal parts missing from the eight. So if you indeed said A, you are correct. All right, boys and girls, let's move on. Let's go again. So we're looking at the same items, A, B, C, D, pizza, orange, cake, and watermelon. But this little boy, he took four sevenths 
of the item of the food. So if he took four sevenths, which one of the food items did he take from? Is it A, is it B, is it C, or is it D? He took four sevenths of, the, of this particular food item. And as I look at the responses in the chat, I'm seeing that there are a lot of C's coming out. All right, awesome work, but let us see what comes up. Hmm. Look at that, you indeed got it right. All right, I'd love to hear the voice of at least one student explain why C is the answer. So I'm looking for the hands. I want to hear a new voice. So I see white, I'm going to allow you to respond this time. Please unmute and talk with me. Why is C the answer? the answer because if you count the amount of parts you will see that you get seven and also there is four parts missing from it so that is how you know you have the answer awesome awesome white thank you so much for sharing so there are seven it's this cake is divided into seven equal parts but of the seven equal parts four of those portions are missing so right away, we see that four-sevenths of the cake is gone. Well done, boys and girls. I really like the interaction. I like your responses so far. Let us see if we can progress further through the lesson. So like we said earlier, we're going to be doing subtracting. But here we have two large cakes on the screen here. And I have three students I want to introduce you to, Tom, Kim, and Sam. Now, these three students, they want a different portion of the cake. Sam wants five, wants eight fifths of the cake. Sam wants eight fifths, fifths of the cake, right? I'm seeing here that Kim wants one and three quarters of the cakes, right? Kim wants one and three quarters of the cake. And now I'm seeing here that Tom wants nine tenths of the cake. Based on these three fraction portions, I want to know, type the name of the student in the chat who wants a proper fraction portion. So of the three fractions that they want, which student wants a proper fraction? Is it Tom? Is it Kim? Is it Sam? Who wants a proper fraction? Let me give you a moment, just put your responses in the chat, all right? And I'm looking in the chat and I'm seeing a lot of Toms coming up. Hmm, so I realize that the students believe that Tom is the one who wants a proper fraction. Hmm, that's really interesting. Now, just to again hear the voice of the students, who want to raise your hand and explain to me why is it that you believe Tom is the one who wants a proper fraction? All right, go ahead, um, hey, uh, Kalila. I say Tom because a proper fraction is when the numerator is a smaller value than the denominator. And it well, says that Tom, yeah, go ahead. And it says that Tom wants nine or ten of the cake. All right, but I want to practice now. Practice me. Say nine tenths. I want to practice the fraction language, but you're doing great so far though. Okay. All right. So Tom indeed wants nine tenths. And if you go by the definition, we realize that the numerator, and I like the word in numerator, and that's the number that's at the top. So the numerator is smaller than that of the denominator. Well done, well done. So let us see if we can use this knowledge of ours to, to get into the subtraction of whole numbers using proper, using proper fractions first. Let's start there. So let's explore together. So here we have a large cake on the table and Kate wants to take a fraction of the cake home, all right? Now, if it is that Kate is saying that she wants three quarters of the cake, right? Kate, Kate is saying she wants three quarters of the cake. I want you to put in the chat for me an expression that represents what Kate is doing to the cake, all right? So let's see if I can handle that. I want you to put in the chat for me an expression that represents what Kate wants to do to the cake. Remember now, Kate wants to take 
three quarters of the cake home. So there is how many cakes, how many cakes do we have working with on the screen, boys and girls? How many cakes are on the screen? You can always put it in the chat, but want to work with me now. So how many cakes are on the screen? Great, I'm seeing one cake. I am seeing one cake on the screen. But now Kate wants to take three quarters of that cake away. Now, based on what I'm saying out right now, could you write that down as an expression? There's one cake and Kate wants to take three quarters of the cake away. She wants to take three quarters of the cake home. Could you manage to write an expression in the chat that represents this? One cake and Kate wants to take away three quarters of the cake. Are we able to produce that expression, boys and girls? If we're struggling, don't worry about it. We'll work on it together. But let us see if we can push through and develop an expression to represent what Kate, what Kate is doing to the cake. So we acknowledge, boys and girls, that there's only one cake. And with that one cake, Kate wants to take three quarters of the cake away. Now look on the screen and see, I have one minus three quarters. One subtracts three quarters. Boys and girls, are you seeing that on the screen right now? One take away three quarters? Let me know if you're seeing that expression on the screen. All right, great. Now what I have there on the screen is called an expression. So the next time I say expression, I'm looking for something that looks, looks for something like this. So we have one take away three quarters. This is representing what Kate wants to do because the story told us that Kate wants to take home three quarters of the cake. So it's one cake and we're subtracting three quarters away. I hope you're all with me on this point. Now that we have the expression, we want to get into the part where we're gonna take away three quarters of the cake. How should I start this activity if I want to take three quarters of the cake away? What should I do first to the cake before I can take away three quarters from it? And I'm going in the chat at the same time. I'm seeing quite a few responses. She wants to cut. So I'm looking at um, Kalila who says she wants to cut it into four pieces and take three. That's a good one. I like that. I'm seeing others saying the same thing. She wants to cut it into four parts. I'm seeing um, Ibanks uh, saying, and also Baker saying the same thing. You should cut the cake into four pieces. But let me ask you, boys and girls, into any equal, into any piece, just cut it in four, just, just cut it in four pieces, doesn't matter how. What is special about the four pieces? I see, I see Kalila saying it as well. Cut it into four equal parts. Well done. So yes, we want to cut it into four, but we want to cut it into four equal parts, right? So let's cut the cake into four parts. So first one, if I cut it into four equal parts, what would be the fraction for just one of those parts? Put it in the chat. If I cut the cake into four equal parts, what would be the fraction of just one of the parts? And I'm seeing the responses are coming in. One part of the cake is a quarter. So let me label them as you had indicated in the chat. Great. So each portion of the cake is a quarter. But now that we have the quarter, we have, we have the cake divided into quarters. My question to you now, how many portions should I take out? Let me know in the chat. How many portions, portions should I take out? And I'm seeing three. So because I want three quarters of the cake, I am literally taking out three quarters. So let's work together, boys and girls. Let's take them out. One quarter. Let's go again. Two quarters. And finally, three quarters. There you go. I have literally taken out three quarters. One, two, three. Three quarters has been taken away from the cake. Now, boys and girls, if I've taken three quarters of the cake away from one, what fraction of the cake remains? Anybody tell me in the chat? What fraction of the cake remains after you have taken away three quarters of the cake? So I'm looking in the chat now to see the responses. And as I look, I'm seeing quite a few responses. 
similar. I'm seeing some saying three quarters, but majority saying quarter. So for those same three quarters, I want to remind you that we would have removed, we have taken away the three quarters. So the three quarters gone home with Kate. What is left when you remove three quarters? Just a quarter as it is on the screen. So one take away three quarters is going to give us a result of a quarter. Well done, boys and girls. I've been looking at the chat and I'm realizing that you have been following along well. So I must commend you for that. So let's keep it going. We want to see if we can, we can follow on this trend and build out as to what it means to subtract the fractions. So let's go again. So this time we have some, and some want to take away seven tenth, tenths of the cake, right? So some want to take seven tenths of the cake. Now, if some is taking seven tenths of the same cake, says so one cake again, I want you to help me now, boys and girls. Let's see if you are following me. Could you write an expression for me in the chat that represents what Sam wants to do? So Sam wants to take seven tenths of the cake. Could you write in the chat an expression that represents what Sam wants to do? And I want you to reflect on what we did earlier with Kate. We wrote an expression for Kate. Kate wanted to take three quarters of the cake away. So we had an expression for Kate. Now we want an expression for Sam. Is there anyone willing to type in the chat uh, an expression that represents what Sam wants to do? And bear in mind, Sam wants to take away seven tenths of one cake. So there's one cake and Sam wants seven tenths of that one cake. I'm looking in the chat and I'm seeing two responses. And I am looking at the, I'm the, of the two, there's one that is correct. So I see, and I see others joining in now. So um, Kalila, you have the correct response for the expression. If it is that you thought of writing one minus seven tenths, then you are correct. This is the expression that represents what Sam wants to do. So Sam wants to take seven tenths of a cake. So it is one minus seven tenths. And if you have this, boys and girls, you are on the right track. You understand what it means to produce an expression. But now that we have this expression, what should we do to the cake for us to be able to take seven tenths from it? Let me know. What should I do to the cake to be able to get it? And I see a wonderful response in the chat. I am seeing that I need to cut it into 10 equal parts. And I love the emphasis on the equal because for it to truly be represented as the fraction, we need to get it into equal parts, but we need to get into 10 equal parts. Now, just before, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit curious. Um, why is it that for this cake, I need to cut it into 10 equal parts? Who wants to raise their hand and talk to me? Why is it for this particular cake, I need to cut it into 10 equal parts? All right. Um, Kalila, I'll allow you to go. I would cut it in 10 equal parts because, what's his name? He said he wants to take 7 tenths away from the cake, meaning that the whole cake the denominator, because we know that the denominator means how much parts they are. And he says he wants to take seven tenths. So that means the cake would be cut in 10 parts, equal parts. Okay, okay, great. Awesome response. You're on the ball today with your responses. So you're indeed correct. We want to cut the cake into 10 equal parts because the denominator is indicating that, boy, I want seven tenths. Awesome job. I, I really love that response. So let's do so. Now, boys and girls, if I cut the cake into 10 equal parts, here's my big question. What is the size of just one of those parts? Again, if I cut the cake into 10 equal parts, what is the size as a fraction for just one of those pieces? If I take one of those pieces up, what is the fraction of that piece that I have taken? 
And I'm looking in the chat. I know that the boys and girls are just thinking it through before they put it down. And I'm seeing the responses. One tenth. Each piece, each portion right now is one tenth. Great jobs, boys. Great job, boys and girls. So here's my next question to you now. Let us continue the process of the subtraction. If I want to take seven tenths of um, seven tenths away from this cake, how many pieces do I need to take? How many slices do I need to take out in order to get to my to get to my seven tenths? And I'm seeing seven in the chat. Well done, boys and girls. Let us take seven tenths together. So let's go for it. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths. Boys and girls, we have taken seven tenths. So we've taken seven tenths slices out. So I've taken seven slices out. And we've taken seven tenths of the cake away. Now that we have done that, could you tell me what fraction or portion of the cake is left after you have taken seven tenths of the cake away? Just type in the chat, boys and girls, the portion of cake left after you have taken seven tenths of the cake away. Well done, well done. I'm seeing the responses. I'm three, seeing three tenths in the chat. Well done, boys and girls. We really appreciate how you have been interacting with the content today. Well done. So indeed, we have three-tenths of the cake left. Awesome job. Now, we want to see you do it on your own. So this time, I won't be doing much illustration this time around. But what I want you to do for me, here we have a, we have a task. Mrs. Robinson baked an apple pie. I hope we like apple pies. So she gave two fifths to her neighbor. What fraction of the apple pie is left? Think about it, boys and girls. This one is yours. This is yours to do. So Mrs. Robinson baked an apple pie. She gave two fifths to her neighbor. What fraction of the apple pie is left? I want you to put your responses in the chat, boys and girls. And let's see if you really had it going on. I'm seeing quite a few responses in the chat at this point in time. Now, I want to allow someone to speak. So raise your hand if you want to explain to me how it is you got your response. What did you do to get your answer? All right. So if it is that you want to share with me, I'll invite you to raise your hand and I'll allow you to explain what you did. I'm looking at the chat again and I'm seeing one hand. I'll take the one hand and let us hear the explanation. All right. Go ahead, Kalila. I said um, three fifths because, as I said before, we know that the denominator tells how much how much the whole is cut into. And this denominator is saying the apple pie is cut into five pieces. And she also said she gave her neighbor five fifths of her apple pie. And if you were to take away two from five, your remainder would be, you would get three as a remainder. And she would have three fifths left of her pie. All right. Thank you so much. Well done. I, I like the explanation. And I, I, as I look at the responses, I believe that your, your colleagues, the other students, boys and girls here, you would have also had similar thinking for what it is that you're doing. Now, as I continue, I'm just interjecting a bit to let you know that Miss Bell is also here with me at this point in time, and she will be also giving me some amount of assistance in the chat. Miss Bell, you want to say hi to boys and girls before we continue? Hello, everyone. Good evening. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Bell. So we're going to continue with the lesson, boys and girls. And I must say, you have been doing a great job so far. So I want you to just give yourselves all a round of applause. You can utilize the, the virtual reaction tools just to let you know that 
you are giving yourself a round of applause because you've been doing excellent so far. But let us continue on what we are doing. So we have looked at subtracting a proper fraction from a whole number. But now we want to look at how that looks when it's time to subtract it from more than one whole numbers. So let us see if we can push on with the, with the activity as planned. So we have here, there are three chocolate bars on the table. Wow, one, two, three. I'm just checking it's three. Now, Kevin took a fraction of one bar. He took five twelves, right? So again, there are three chocolate bars on the screen. By the way, are you seeing the three chocolate bars? I'm just checking it out to see that you and I are seeing the same thing. Are you seeing the three chocolate bars, boys and girls? All right, good. So there are three chocolate bars and Kevin wants to take what? Five twelfths of one of those bars. Hmm. Could someone just put in the chat an expression that represents the information that we have here? Let us see who can pull off this one. It's a, and it's a little different from what we have been looking at, but let's see if our boys and girls can apply themselves. Can you think about what we've been doing so far and to write an expression in the chat that represents what we are about to do? There are three chocolate bars and Kevin took, he took five twelfths of one of those bars. Is there anyone in the chat who will be ready so now? Mr. Edgel in the chat, I'm seeing three. Take away five twelfths. I've seen awesome. a fire tablet saying four twelfths. Interesting, interesting. So I, I think I heard what I've been looking for. I want to explore that some more. So three, take away five twelfths. If you had that, boys and girls, you're indeed correct. You would have represented your scenario as an expression. And if you got that, it means that you're, you're, you're following along and you're understanding how to build out on the expression. So I'm glad you're following as to what an expression is and how to create it from the storyline. Good job, boys and girls. Three, take away five twelfths. Now, the story told us that he's taking five twelfths of one of the chocolate bars. So boys and girls, I want you to help me now. Am I going to cut up all the chocolate bars? Or is that I'm going to cut one? You tell me. What am I doing, boys and girls? Put your responses in the chat. How should I approach this task? I need, I need to remove five twelves. Am I going to remove five twelves from all or just one? Are there any responses coming my way, Miss Bell? Yes, Mr. Edgel, I'm seeing a lot of ones. A lot of ones. Great job, boys and girls. So if you said we're going to cut just one of the chocolate bars, you're on the right path because this fraction is really speaking just to one of the bars. So we have the three bars and we want to cut the three, the, one of the bars into, into parts. Let me ask you, how many parts should I break one of the chocolate bars into, boys and girls? How many equal parts should I break one of the chocolate bars into? How should I, how should I do this? Anything coming my way, Miss Bell? Yes, Mr. Edgel, I see some 12. So I see one person said three. Two person with three, but I mostly see 12. Mostly see 12. All right, great. So I remember earlier, I was told by one of the students here that we're supposed to divide our whole into equal parts based on the denominator of the fraction. And I believe that the students who are saying 12, they're following that principle. So because we want five twelves, we need to first divide our chocolate bar into 12 equal parts. So boys and girls, if I decide to break my chocolate bar into 12 equal parts, what would one of those parts be? What is the fraction for one of those pieces? If I, if I break the chocolate bar into 12 equal parts, can you tell me what is the fraction for one of those pieces? So I'm here so waiting. 112, 112, 112 mostly coming in. Awesome. It means that the boys and girls here, they are really thinking this thing through. So boys and girls, if it is that each of these 
chocolate bars, each piece, each, each portion is one twelfth. How many of these pieces do I need to remove? What should I do? How many should I remove from the set? And I'm seeing something. I'm seeing some fives. I see some one person say one, another person with one, but I'm mostly seeing five coming in. All right, great. So if it is that we have divided one chocolate bar into 12 equal parts, and we all agree that one of those pieces is one twelfth, then we want to remove five twelfths. So let's go now. Let's work together. So I have here, my whole is divided into 12 parts, 12 equal parts, and we want to now remove five of those pieces. So I now have one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. Awesome. So boys and girls, now that I have removed five twelfths, this one may be tricky, but let's see. What do I have left? What do I have left? Tell me all that I have left. Think about that part. Tell me all that I have left. So, Mr. Edgel, it seemed like some person went ahead with, without listening to the full question because I said 712. I see some other 712. I see someone said 3112. Hmm, 3112 is an interesting one. So, boys and girls, let's play with it some more. I am thinking that the seven twelves is coming from the one chocolate bar. So, I am I am thinking that the students, boys and girls, I'm thinking that that's where your mind is. And you're not far. You're really not far. But there are more chocolate bars on the screen. I agree with the seven twelves, but there's still more on the screen, right? So, I'm seeing some changes in the responses, Miss Bell. Are you seeing them too? Yes, I am. Now I'm seeing two and seven twelves. Two and seven twelves. Awesome, boys and girls. So even though we took five twelves from one of the chocolate bars and we have seven twelves left, we must remember that we still have two whole chocolate bars as well. So you have two chocolate bars and seven twelves. So if you say you have two chocolate bars and seven twelves, we expect our answer to look like this. But boys and girls, let me double check to see if you remember. What type of fraction will this answer be? Put in the chat the type of fraction that this answer represents. So I'm seeing mixed already. Mixed number, mix, mix, mix. <laughs> Awesome job, boys and girls. If you said mixed number, you are indeed correct. This mixed number is made up of two parts, a whole number and a fraction part. So we're seeing evidently by the large two, the two is the whole number representing the two chocolate bars that we have. And the fraction part will be the seven twelfths representing the pieces of chocolate that is left over. So when we take five twelfths from three, we are left with two and seven twelfths. Boys and girls, awesome job so far, but let us push on because we still have more work to do. So let's continue because we need to practice. So here we go again. There are two chocolate bars on the table. Kevin took a fraction of one bar. He took one third. Boys and girls, I hope you know what I'm going to ask you for. I want an expression. I want an expression, boys and girls, that represents what Kevin is doing. While you prepare yourselves, let me just read it again. There are two chocolate bars on the table. Kevin took a fraction of one bar. He took one third. So I'm just waiting for you to think about it and you just place in the chat the expression that represents what Kevin is doing. Miss Bell, is there anything coming our so, way? So already answers are coming in and I'm seeing two minus one third. Oh, awesome, awesome. Two minus one third. So boys and girls, if that's what you have in place, it means that you are right on the ball. You're doing well with your expression. So truly, we are looking at two minus one third. No, boys and girls, 
if it is that we are now going to be removing one third from two, we want to target a chocolate bar. But my question to you now is, how many parts should we divide a chocolate bar into? Think about it, boys and girls. We're taking away one third. But before we can do so, we need to divide the, our chocolate bar into pieces, into equal pieces. Could you place in the chat the number of equal parts we should divide our chocolate bar into before we begin to do any form of work on the chocolate bars? So Mr. Edgel, I'm seeing all threes coming in. All threes, great. So it means that our boys and girls, they have figured out the pattern and they have realized what to do. So boys and girls, let's see if we can do that. So we're gonna take one of the chocolate bars and we're gonna divide it into three equal parts. Now that we have done so boys and girls, how many of those parts do we need to take? Let me hear from you. We have divided it into three equal parts. How many parts do we need to remove now? So I'm seeing one, one right across the board. Awesome, boys and girls. So if you're saying to take one of those parts out, you are correct. Because all we want is just one third. So if we take one third of the bars away, just one third away, my big question to you now, boys and girls, what is left? What do we have left in total? Are you able to produce for me what we have left in total? I want to think about it carefully and place your response in the chat. What do we have left in total? So Mr. Edgel, I see one person, right? One and two thirds, but the others are two thirds. I see more one and two thirds coming in. I even see a 15 thirds. That one is indeed interesting. I you know I actually agree with the 15 thirds as well. But boys and girls, if you are saying one and two thirds, you are saying the right thing. No, I just just to pick up on a pattern, I realize that when we're subtracting, we seem to sometimes leave off the whole number. Boys and girls, let me encourage you. If it is that you're working with more than one holes, meaning we had two chocolates, don't forget that there is still a hole that you didn't touch any at all, right? So it's one and two thirds. And I see some subtraction signs being used. I want to encourage you not to use subtraction signs for the answer, all right? So it is one and two thirds. And don't forget that there is still a whole chocolate bar on the screen that we are working with. So if you forget it, it means that you're leaving out a part of your answer. And we don't want that one bit. We want to ensure you have everything in place. So we're looking at one and two thirds. And this one and two thirds is coming from the fact that you have one whole chocolate bar and two thirds of another chocolate bar. Awesome work, boys and girls. Let us see if we can put you to the test. So this time you're gonna work by yourself. Here is your question to respond to. There are three pies on the table. Boy, Kevin was at it, man. Anyway, Kevin took a fraction of a pie. He took one fifth. Boys and girls, you're on your own for this one. So take your time and work through the question. Reflect on what we have been doing so far and the process that we have undergone to, the, to arrive at an answer. Again, there are three pies on the table. And Kevin took one fifth of a pie. Once you're through, place the answer itself in the chat. So if you're placing the expression, I understand that you're placing the expression, but I would love to see also your end result. All right, so I'd love to see what your end result would look like. And I, I like that response in the chat that I'm seeing. I'm seeing here that if I get it wrong, it's okay. You know what? I am in agreement with that statement because mathematics is about learning and trying to have fun. So don't worry about it. Just take your time and work through the question. All right? So I'm hoping to hear from you your, your final answer when you're through with the process. All right, so I don't know, Miss Bella, is there anything um, that we can take at this point in time? 
Yes, Mr. Edil, so I'm saying some answers and persons are saying two and four fifths. Two and four fifths. All right. So I, I'm so for the persons who are saying two and four fifths, I would love to hear one of you just explain to everyone else what you're doing. Please raise your hand and let us see if we can hear from you at this point in time as to what you would have done. I think I'm seeing a hand here. Kalila, go ahead. Please explain what you'd have done to get your answer. So I say, my answer is two and four six because in the start, it says he has three pies in all. And he took one fifth. So that's telling me that I need to take one pie and cut it into five parts because five in is the denominator. And then when I cut that pie into five equal parts, I take one part from that from that cut pie, which with the, now the pie will have a remainder of four pieces. So my first, the first part of my answer will be four over five parts, four fifths will be left from the cut pie plus the two whole pies that we did not cut. So that's why my answer was two, four, all right. Awesome work, Kalila. I, I like that one. I like your explanation as well. So what we're seeing here is that you took one fifth of one of the pies and you divided one pie into five equal parts. And from there, you took out one of those parts, leaving you with four fifths. So four fifths of one pie is left, but you also remembered, boys and girls, remembered that there are two other pies that weren't touched any at all. So those two pies need to come back. So it becomes two and four fifths. All right, awesome work. And I, and I hope that you are able to, to work through the question towards the solution. I hope you are able to produce your expression and then thereafter carry out your calculation based on your understanding to get to a result of two and four fifths. Now, let us push on, boys and girls, because we still have a little way to go before the day ends. So, we have been looking at just one whole number, our whole numbers along with, along with um, the proper fraction. But what if we decide to look at whole numbers, but also subtract mixed numbers from it? Let's see if we can go there. And again, I know that we have looked at mixed numbers already, but just to kind of get our minds going. Quickly look on the screen and Put in the chat the number of mixed numbers you see on the screen. So place in the chat the number of mixed numbers you're seeing on the screen. So take your time. Just double check. We're just kind of flexing our minds a little. So look on the screen carefully and type in the chat the number of mixed numbers you're seeing on the screen. So once you have counted, just put your number in the chat so I know that you picked up on the number of mixed numbers in the chat. All right. Is Bella anything from our, our students? So I'm seeing eight, nine, 10, and seven in the chat. All right, boys and girls. So let us count them together. So I am now waving a little red dot on the screen. I'm going to now start from the top and go right across. So four is a whole number, but not a mixed number. So we're going to skip four. So we have two and five, six. So that's our first one. We have one and two fourths. Second, let's go again. Eight and three ninths. That's our third. One and eight tenths. That's our fourth. Let's keep going. We have seven and five tenths. That's our fifth. We're going to go across. This is not one. This is just two fifths. This not, so this is not one. This is just five. So that's not one. So we're now at three 
and four, four fifths, right? Three and four fifths. So we're now at six. Two sevenths, that's not one. So let's go down now. Three and three fifths. That brings us to seven. We have two, so that's not one. We have four twelfths, that's not one. So the final one is nine and eight twelfths. So that's eight. So if you said eight, you are indeed correct. You counted the number of mixed numbers correctly. And I hope you listen carefully as I named them as well and how I named them as I went through. But that aside, let us get back to business. So we're going to move on to our next slide. So this time, let's see if we can understand what's happening here. So this says Kate bought three pizza. Boy, Kate does love pizza. But anyway, Kate bought three pizza pizzas for her party. Her friends ate two and a half of the pizzas. How much pizza, how much of the pizza is left? No. Before we go any further, before we even answer the question, could you convert this to an expression for me? Right? Could you just convert this whole thing to an expression? Look at the numbers carefully. Look at the numbers carefully. So she bought three pizzas and her friends ate two and a half. Two and a half of the pizzas were eaten. I wanted to write an expression that represents what she has and how much was removed from it. Think about it carefully. We have been writing expressions for a while now. So I hope, I'm hoping that you're able to write an expression. I think in some cases, I'm seeing the answer. What do you think, Ms. Bell? For the entire question itself? Yes, I'm seeing the answer for the entire question itself. But I see one person, Khalila wrote an expression. Three minus two and a half. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, so just before we get started, we must try to appreciate that we need to get from the, the, the statements to an expression in this case. So we have three minus two and a half. Great job. But now we want to carry out the subtraction. But this is a special situation. Let me ask the students now. I am seeing that there are three pizzas, but I am hearing that two pizzas were eaten and a half. How many whole pizzas were eaten, boys and girls? Let's start there. How many whole pizzas were eaten? Let me know in the chat. So I'm seeing two right across the board, Mr. Edgel. All right. Great job. So two pizzas were eaten. So if two were eaten, how many pizzas do we have left after eating just two of them? So I'm seeing one coming in, one, one, one. All right, one, great. So boys and girls, if we have eaten two pizzas already and two pizzas gone already because we eat it off, how do we account for the other half? What should we do? Read the other half. Anything coming from, from our students, Miss Bell? So I'm seeing cut the pizza in half. Okay. So let's do that. So we have removed two pizzas. We have one left. And we're now cutting that one we have left in half. Now that we have done so, what should we do? We have cut it in half. What do we do next with it, with, with it after cutting it in half? Well, boys and girls, if you say to take it away, anybody say to take it away? Yes, Mr. Hedgel, I see take half. Take half. half. Awesome. So we're removing two pizzas and a half. After we do all of that, boys and girls, what do we have left as our answer? After I've taken so much away. So they're saying a half, half, half. Okay, awesome job, awesome job, great. So we're realizing that there is a process to this thing. Now, let us see if we can 
go over this one more time and then let's see what can be said about it. So Karen has five pizzas this time. And at the party, they ate two and three quarters of the pizzas, right? How much pizza is left, right? So there are five pizzas and they ate two and three quarters of the pizzas. I think I would love to hear a voice for this one. So is there anyone willing to come and talk to us about what you do for this particular pizza? And I would love to hear, just to hear an extra voice. So I'm going to hold off a little, Kalila, just, just for this time, I'm going to allow someone else to share and then we'll see what they have to say. All right, so I'm going to go with the first, the second I saw, um, Lee, I, please go ahead. I, I just allowed one person. Go ahead. Excuse me, sir. Um, so if you had two and three quarters, that means there would be two and one quarter left of the pizza. Okay. Interesting. You want to explain to us what you did to get that? So, um, sir, you have two pizzas and three pizzas and they ate two whole pizzas and one quarter of one. Yes. Then, then there's only one quarter left. So it's two and one quarter. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. You have it down nicely. All right. So that was good. I like that explanation. Uh, Miss Bell, is the chat um, also aligning with that response? Yes, they are aligned with that response. All right, great. So I hope on your own, you're able to write five minus two and three quarters. And from it, like I heard from the student here, they would have taken two away. So two holes were removed. So two pizzas, gone but then from the from what is left you took one of the pizzas divided into four equal parts and took three of those parts away one quarter two quarter three quarters leaving you with two whole pizzas and a quarter of one so that means five minus two and three quarters is equal to two and a quarter boys and girls you have been doing an awesome job so far now let's push you a little further. And again, you're on your own. So boys and girls, this is for you to do. And then we will share in the chat what you did, what your final answer is. Because we're going to push you now. So Mary baked six pies to take to a fair. She, she sold four and a third of the pies. So she sold four and a third of the pies. How many pies are left? Boys and girls, think about it. Think about it and provide us with your final answer. All right. So again, so there are six pies that were baked. Six were baked. And of the six, they sold four and one third. They sold four and one third. After doing all of that, what is left over? So take your time. Take your time. And we will take some responses soon. All right. Ms. Bell, anything from the chat? Let's start there and then we'll go yes, to the- Mr. Edgel. So I'm seeing yes. some persons with two thirds. So I guess they only give in the fraction, but I see others with one and two thirds. Okay, great, great. I see that- um, Nathaniel wants to really wants to share. So I'm going to allow you to go ahead and share what you would have done. Go ahead. Sir, how I got my answer is that Mary baked six spicer and the sentence says she sold four one third and uh four whole four holes. So I did that. I took four pies off, sir, and I took one pie and divided it, divided it into three parts and took one, one, and then that left me 
with uh, two two pies and i took one so that left me with uh, one that so that left you with one um yes yeah, so you, you get in there i heard it one one and piece more your mic went but I, I i heard it i all of what you said all the parts sound really nice i'm going to allow um Kaleli, um Kalila as well to to share all right you can go ahead and give me your explanation as well so the answer i got was one um the answer i got was one and two things how i got that was first i took away the four holes, which then after I did that, she had two whole pies left. Then I split, I parted one of the pies into three equal parts. After the pie was in three equal parts, I took one part from that pie. Then I looked at everything combined and realized that I had one whole pie left and two thirds of the cut pie. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like that response. So indeed, if it is that you wrote out six and you're subtracting four and one third from it, you remove four pies completely, four pies gone completely, leaving with just two pies. Now of those two pies, you divide one of them into three equal parts and then take one of those parts out. So if one part is, is one third, the other two parts would be two thirds. So you have, so you end up with one and two thirds. Boys and girls, if you did this, awesome job. Awesome job, right? So we are now wrapping up, right? We are wrapping up now, boys and girls. So we're going to put three, four questions on the screen. And what I'll do, I'll just give you a minute to just work the questions. After which we'll just take the responses and we are wrapping up for the day. All right. But you're doing a good job so far. And I'm liking what I'm hearing. I'm liking what I'm seeing. So boys and girls, this is actually, I realize that this is actually your homework. My bad. So I want you to take it down, take a picture of it, screenshot for those on a device. I can screenshot, but take a picture of this homework piece and then in. In Monday's session, the answers will be posted before the session starts. So boys and girls, you have been doing a great job so far. I think today went really well. I enjoyed your time and I hope you enjoyed the time here with us as well. So take this down and I hope you have it. I'm now going to move towards closing out the session, but I really hope that you learned something today that you didn't know before, or if you knew it before, you at least you're now reinforcing what you would have learned from your teachers in your classes when it comes on to subtraction. Boys and girls, wonderful job. Miss Bell, what, what do you think? They did well today? They did awesome today. See you Monday, guys, at 4 p.m. Awesome. All right. So all the best, boys and girls. See you again on Monday at 4 p.m., just like Miss Bell just said. We're looking forward to another exciting session, and I really hope that you enjoyed yourself today. All the best.